Hello, I'm a guitar geek and I'm here at Music Gatterman in Upper Austria, which is near where I live, with the man himself, Thomas Brugge. Hey, nice to meet you again. Hey. It's, just, it's like hanging out everywhere. <laughs> I think the last time we saw each other was at TGU. TGU in Treppendorf. Yeah. And before that, it was a Frankfurt Music Messe. And uh, ah, I've seen you around. Around, <laughs> yeah. And at the mess Music Messe where we met first, yeah. you were talking about the new Mercury. Yeah, now one. it's here. And now it's, it's here somewhere. You've been um, playing it. Did we pack it up? Let's see, Mercury Edition. And may I? Yes, please. Okay, I'm holding it finally. Yeah. Last time we talked, you, you wouldn't let it go. The new reverb sounds better, period. Mm -hmm. um, the tonal differences is a matter of taste. And I would say the first generation is a bit more influenced by my GTM 45 phase which um, is using, you know, a softer, a bit spongier, a bit, um, ah, you know, it has a certain character um, that I was influenced. And actually you can hear kind of on all the channels a little bit. Um, some people, people would, ca would call that muddy, mm -hmm. but for me it's um, actually a tonal quality as well. So I still love my first generation, to be honest. The, the Mercury edition is based on a lot of feedback and to sum it up, it's probably more flexible mm -hmm. and it's tighter when it comes to all the overdrive channels in a way. Mm -hmm. The mid frequencies, everything sits some, something different, but it's not changed one, you know, just like one knob, everything has changed and then everything falls into place and some people don't even hear the difference. But for me, it's a different amp and I love them both. I live and breathe tube amps for decades mm -hmm. and uh, all this experience is in here even if I'm not using a hundred percent you know every stage tube but uh, you know at the beginning people didn't trust me they think huh you know how oh, where's the tubes you know how does this work but you know the more time we see comparisons like a B comparison the more time people use it and take it serious mm -hmm. you get you you start to understand i've been there like already 10 10 years ago in my head but now you can see it you know and i i know how things will be in the future you know where we are now just imagine you know this technology gives you the same quality like a traditional amp in things getting harder for traditional amp builders not because i don't wish that they have problems no but it's so hard to good to get good tube quality yeah. So, I mean, you know, back in the old days, you got military graded tubes and there were plenty of tubes for reasonable prices. But today things go crazy. I mean, you know, I know Dave Friedman and some other boutique guys and uh, I know how, what the struggle is, you know, also with my past with Ethan Kettner, you know, tube amps uh, rely on good tubes. And where are the sources for good tubes? They are not getting more, they're getting, getting less. I mean, this tube is designed for missiles. This okay. is Russian military specs design tube. So, you know, this is designed to be hit hard and vibration. Okay. So this is no problem for this kind it's of tube. It's not going to explode on us. No, no. Even if it's so small and it might look like a new modern piece of equipment like a modeler, it is analog and the way to operate it is still analog. You have knobs, you, you twiddle the knobs and this is what you get. Yeah. Simple as that. Of course I have some special function a little bit hidden, but this is special case for special situations. But you know, this is hands on plug in play. You can get a good sound out of this easily. Plug in, dial in the tone and play. So just like a regular amp, it's just small. There's something about digital technology that, that I never liked so much is if you have the pages. I mean, it's like yeah. you have one page and you have to think in, on, on levels. One level is, okay, this is, I, this is the routing. Then the next thing is I dig in, in one uh, parameter page for one thing. And then the next page and the next thing. And I'm dealing with technology, but when I'm a musician, that's not what I want to do. Yeah. So me even offering, you know, the MIDI option for the four cable method and yeah. those multi-effects devices, personally, 
I have a setup like this, but I'm not using it because I'm an analog guy. I have my old school analog pedals like this or this or this or <laughs> this all on my pedal board and I have the knobs, I know what they are doing and I just bring them in the single path or out and that's it. I bring the real amp into a format that is as handy as these modelers and now maybe I find even people buying my product and making the amp experience you know because they thought I will never use a real amp you know it's too heavy or whatever and they think oh this is something that I can mm -hmm. carry and then they make the experience you know what maybe that's cool yeah. I've seen that really? yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, I could see people um, funny thing is you know some people when they go and play at home and they have their modelers and it sounds perfect in the living room but then they go on stage and it's like am I loud enough yeah. it is it doesn't really cut through the band so and then sometimes I, I simply give the advice you know less is more just play a real amp doesn't mean it needs to be my amp my amp it could be a, a standard classic amp as well in a band situation it does a different job yeah. just unplug the whole thing and go straight and I had this with my M2 and people go, you're right, man, I didn't know. A, a real tube amp is the best pedal platform that I know mm -hmm. so far. You know, there are some other nice little tiny amps that, you know, mechanically would go on a pedal board and make a great job there. But how they, s they deal with pedals sonically is different. And so, you know, most people using pedals use kind of Fender style amps or, you know, Marshall Plexi style amps. The amps are rather clean and the pedals do the job. Sure. And then when you have several, uh, several pedals, um, the, the, the question is, is the amp kind of matching the different pedals in a way that the sound comes from like one universe? Or is it like, this pedal sounds out of a different world, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and this has something to do not only with frequency, but also with like compression and overtones in your clean, more, more or less clean preamp. And this is the stuff that makes, you know, some amps better for pedals than others. And I'm aware of that, of course, and I, I worked on that a lot to get there. And I hope uh, it can do this. And I have been to your colleagues from that pedal show. Um, might be out soon as well. And um, these are, you know, the, you know the, the guys that only go for this aspect, only one aspect. And this is the highest experience. And I was like, you know, now it's, it's getting serious. And um, you, will, you can watch the rest on that. On their oh, <laughs> yeah. So but, I'll, I'll link to that video in yeah. the video description so yeah. we won't give too much away. Yeah, so, so pedals, pedals is a very important thing, especially for an amp that is um, a nice um, to, to be on a pedal board and um, working together with pedals. Is that split inspired <laughs> by the Tube Screamer? Or? Well, if you look very close, if you look very close, I think yes. Okay. So my knobs here is like a modern version of that knob. I actually took a saw and cut it in half to see how the mechanics work. But I, okay. I changed the design in a certain way so my, my rings kind of can lit up and show you the function as well. And um, in this switch, which I think comes from an elevator, you know, this really? is like, okay, yeah, it's like a Japanese elevator, you know, one, two, three. Um, the switch is inside the switch. I just use the same mechanics mm -hmm. and then have a micro switch underneath, sure. which makes it, uh, well, more reliable, blah, blah, blah. But I use the same kind of um, idea and there's something, I like the beauty of it. Yeah. 
it, it's iconic. And, and it's iconic. When, because I was thinking about the switches. I know mm -hmm. that we're talking about switches, but um, <laughs> who cares? You know, my question is, I'm trying to think of more things to ask you than when we did the first interview. Right. I thought, why is he going for that look? And then you brought this out during the show, and I was like, oh, ah, light bulb moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, this thing has been around me for decades, maybe three decades. So, you know, and it, I'm inspired of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything that I buy. And I have a lot, tons of toys at home inspire me. And uh, so the Switch was important to me. Good. So this is like the next generation. Okay. Yeah, I've yeah, feel it. solved the mystery. <laughs>If you think modern, in a way, it's like, okay, I want to be in every situation uh, a, a, a nice uh, solution. But mm -hmm. if there is USB, USB is just, how to say, it's an interface, it's a port, it's a standard. Okay, how good is USB? U USB is killer and it's very convenient, no problem. But if who is the master, who is the slave in the digital world? And that's something else. You know, in the analog world, you just plug in a cable here and a plug a cable on the other side. And if you find the control to get up the volume, then you're done. In the digital world, it's about, you know, sync. It's yeah. like, is this on 44 or is it on 48 or 96 kilohertz? Who is the master? Who is the slave? Do we have jitter? Do we have all this kind of thing? I didn't want to do this. Mm -hmm. This is something for the digital guys. And I stay out of their world as long as I can. I'm about to be the traditional sound guy that gets the sound as good as possible and as it gets. And then, you know, they're so convenient interfaces and you can buy it on any budget level. You know, you can buy a cheap one that does the job maybe for your demos or you can go crazy and buy a high-end one for your, you know, everlasting recording of your life. Uh, studio quality, no, no problem, but I don't want to make this decision in this unit and compromise on anything. So for me, I reduced the amp one by itself to the means of GitHub amp and uh, uh, it's like a scalable system. So, you know, I offer my blue box for more speaker simulated output sounds. Uh, I offer my remote one for more switching options. I offer the MIDI adapter for more uh, switching options um, or an effects loop to integrate some effects pedal in the loop between pre and power amp. So the options are there, mm. but you take the decision yeah. and, and then if it comes to recording, you can go straight into your interface from here yeah. or you use IRs or you use blah, blah, blah. You decide what to do. I'm a guitar player and I still gig. So for me, the, 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 the focus is I need something that works on stage. Mm. Of course, you can use it in the studio as well. But I want, you know, I always look from this perspective. Being on stage, how would I like to deal with it? This thing I can transport. If you have a 25 kilogram amplifier, this might be sitting beautifully in your studio, but the moment you put it in your car and you go to the venue, your hands are already so cramped up that you play shit. So this is why I want something lightweight like this, mm -hmm. you know. So this is all from my perspective being a live and gigging uh, musician. Sure, I'm, I never stop. <laughs> so, um, you know, I tweaked the M1 and I still tweak the M1, um, but let's put it that way. I'm not doing, it's, it's like doing a new album, you know? It's like, I'm not about to do two albums a year. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I'm, it's like writing songs. I have new ideas constantly and I have even new ideas for this. Um, but I'm, I'm sure we will see this for a very long time as it is. And then uh, maybe there's a next generation or maybe there comes another one that is different, blah, blah, blah. I don't know where, in which kind of format I will sum this up. But uh, every day I tweak something and every day I get inspired, even doing this A-B testing, which is great. You know, it's like, ah, 
okay, I've been there, I've seen that. And then, uh, you know, something comes to my mind, I think, yeah, I could work on this. And then, let's see, in a year's time, or we will, we will see more stuff to come. Thomas is a top bloke, and I had to edit that because he can talk forever, and all of it is interesting and useful information. Thank you also to Music Gataman for letting us shoot in the shop, and thank you to you for watching. There's another video regarding the Mercury edition of the Amp 1 on my channel. You can watch that by clicking the video that's floating around now. There's also more videos floating around, or you can subscribe and thumbs up and comment down below and all that standard YouTube stuff. I'm a guitar geek. I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.